Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, uh, what can we Muslims do to follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunnah? And what is your advice to us? It means like uh, today's society. Thank you, sister. And probably this is the last question. Um, I would advise the Muslims that don't focus so much on the external sunnah. We want all the sunnah to the best of our ability. We want to eat, we want to sleep, we want to wear, we want to dress, we want to act, we want to talk, we want to do everything how the process he liked, how he loved, what he'd been ordered. Because Allah subhanahu wa says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْ فَانْتَهُوا Take what the Prophet gives you and leave alone what he forbids you. But the most important part of the sunnah, it is not the external part of the sunnah, it is the internal part of the sunnah because he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, verily I have been sent to perfect what? Good manners, good behavior. If the Muslims would charge themselves with good behavior, good conduct, watch how you speak, watch how you act, how you deal with non-Muslims, whether you lie, whether you steal, whether you deceive, whether you argue, whether you curse, whether you comply or you don't comply, whether you assimilate, you cooperate, you collaborate, you assimilate <coughs> when <coughs> it is the law. When a Muslim sees the sign that says 60 miles an hour and he or she decides to drive 80 miles an hour, I don't care if you're dressed in white from head to toe, you're in violation because you got to follow the rules. Safety, <clears throat> health, the rules of the society, for the benefit of the people, everybody has to do what? what you, uh, Muslims, what I'm speaking Chinese? The rules of the society, which is there to protect everybody, which is there to benefit everybody. What have Muslims to do? We have to obey. Unless that rule or that principle, it directly undermines the principles of Islam. In that case, there is no obedience to any creature when it involves disobedience to Al-Khaliq. This is the principle. But other than that, we Muslims have to obey. We have to comply. We need to assimilate in order that people don't see us to be on the outside. That people don't see us to be, you know, uh, what you call it, um, uh, some people who set themselves out and uh, they can't tolerate and they can't mix and they can't uh, interact and they don't reciprocate. That, you know, it's only win for them but no win for somebody else. They're always frowning. They're always complaining. They're already blaming. They're already talking bad about other people. And they never want to give. They always want to take. Muslims, if we Muslims correct our behavior, if our behavior starts to shine and people can feel and smell the sunnah just like you can taste and you can, you can smell basmati rice before you taste it. Nobody can hide the smell of basmati rice. If you're cooking downstairs, the whole house can smell it. The character of the Muslim is like the fragrance of the basmati rice. And everybody wants basmati rice. <laughs> Especially when you put a little curry and some other spices in it too. So this is our problem and this is our challenge. Our problem and our challenges is that Muslims, we know the doctrine, we know the hadith, we know the Quran, we know the Arabic language, we know the ahkam, we know the balagha, we know the tafsir, we know this, we know that, but we're not acting upon what we say. And Allah, He says in the Quran, O you who believe, لِمَ تَكُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O you Muslims, why you say things that you don't do? Kabura, maqtan, and Allah. It is hateful, odious in the sight of Allah that you say, recite, and quote things that actually you don't do. In Allah, you have Buladina, huh? You katiduna, fi sabidihi, what? Safan, kanahum, bunyanum, marsus. 
So we Muslims, inshallah, if Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct our behavior. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, to, to, to move our words, to expand our iman, to increase our knowledge, to give us more love and trust of each other, respect for our parents, love and loyalty for the scholars of Islam. Even if we disagree, we still love them, we follow. Even if we disagree, because there is even, there's a menhaj, there's an adab for even disagreement. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each one of us will make an assessment of themselves. And Khalid should try to become a better Muslim. Khalid should try to become a better human being. Khalid should look to his character. He should look to how he's dealing with his neighbor, his colleague, and his co-worker. Because I'm telling you for sure, one out of 50 people in this country, they're ready to take Shahada right now. But Muslims are in the way. One out of 10 of your non-Muslim neighbors and colleagues and co-workers, if they don't become a Muslim, they will become your ally if you treat them correctly. But right now, Muslims don't have many allies, and Muslims are not able to give many shahadas. And we blame it on them. We say, all oh, them kafirs, I've been talking to them for a long time. No, what you're doing, you see, you're, you're, what you're serving, it don't smell like basmati rice. Your character is smelling bad. Your clothes are looking nice. Your words are sounding nice. You are religiously correct, but you are characteristically wrong. If we change that, and we pray to Allah that we change it, inshallah, Islam is going to enter every house, and Islam is going to enter the hearts like Bluetooth. They can't stop it. It's called what? The Dawa Tsunami. And nobody can stop it. Brothers and sisters, mashallah. So this woman asked a question about how to follow Muhammad Sunnah in today's society. And he said, for you to follow what Prophet Muhammad did in the Quran, you have to obey what the society you know tells you to do. You have to first, you know, obey the rules and regulations, whatever the country tells you to do do it don't disobey the laws of the land just by saying oh you are doing this no whatever you do it's what will affect you so he was just trying to let people know that it's very very important to do the right thing at the right time and be a good person be a good muslim and sooner is just like you have it that's fragrance you know why you, you you scent something very nice even if it's a perfume you know it's around the whole, whole room that is how Suna is so you have to lighten up the whole you know atmosphere lighten up your country be the light of your country make a difference to people positively make a difference by doing good deeds you know no matter how you've read the hadith you've read the quran you follow the sunnah you've done all those things if you don't live rightly if you don't obey the rules and regulation it's something that is going to affect you and it's trying to let us know that before you can follow what prophet Muhammad did you yourself have to live rightly you need to do things by example show by example you know you have to prove by example it's whatever you do it's what people will follow so let people you know see the goodness in islam so that when they see how good and just you are it attract people and he made one statement he said islam will ev enter every home so it's the way you you know communicate with people it's the way you you know appear yourself to people that's what matters that it's humanitarian service that matters you need to do good deeds you need to obey what the quran says you should do it must be you no know, peace love joy among people around you so it's just right to encourage everybody out there that the sunnah is not complete if you don't do the right thing at the right time the sunnah is not complete if you don't live rightly or impact into people's lives so that's very very important so that was it and that was a beautiful message i really really enjoyed it i don't know about you but let me know your thoughts in the comment box and let me know what you feel about this video well that's all for today guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for me in the next one